Um, if you're not aware, uh, a lot of people were upset about the in, in memoriam section of the Oscars uh, because there were several actors that were omitted. Uh, the big one I think that was trending the most was Luke Perry. Uh, Luke Perry uh, uh, passed away uh, recently, and um, he was not featured in the in memoriam section of the Oscars. And this is a pretty good article uh, here from uh, Yahoo Entertainment, um, where they and this is dated February 11th um, of this year. And uh, it gave the Academy's response, which is, this is the quote. This is the Academy's response to Luke Perry. And there's some other actors I want to give shout outs to here that they, they mentioned in the article. It says, the Academy receives hundreds of requests to include loved ones and industry colleagues in the Oscars in memoriam segment. An official statement from the Academy of Motion Pictures and Science is read. An executive committee representing every branch considers a list and makes selections for the telecast based on limited available time. All the submissions are included on Oscar.com and will remain on the site throughout the year. Luke Perry and Cameron Boyce are remembered in the Oscar.com gallery. Uh, Cameron Boyce is an actor I don't know a whole lot about. I do know that um, he was also, uh, there was a, a lot of people on Twitter that were upset that he was not included um, in the Oscars, uh, the, the in memoriam. But the thing that makes Perry's omission so glaring is apparently uh, Perry is actually in once upon a time in Hollywood, he's actually in that movie. So he's in a movie that actually was being honored that year, and yet he was not included in the in memoriam uh, portion of the of the program. Uh, also regarding film, uh, he was in the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, which is kind of a cult classic. Obviously, that's what led to the Buffy series that there's so many fans of. Um, he also appeared in The Fifth Element, uh, and he was in another film called uh, Eight Seconds. So. But but the the glaring omission with uh, with Perry I think has to be that he was actually in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which had numerous nominations, and then he was not featured in the in memoriam uh, section of the show. Um, and there's uh, various uh, Twitter comments here from from celebrities and things like that that were upset. And I kind of wanted to single out one over here, which is from uh, Ho Holly Robinson Pete, and she said in 2002 when my dad Matthew Robinson, the original Gordon from Sesame Street was included in the TV Academy Memoriam. It was such a great moment for our family. Here are a few people, in my opinion, who should have been included last night. And she talks about Cameron Boyce, Luke Perry, and Rene Aubergenois, because he was not included in the in memoriam section either. So wow. I would like to include them in ours and say, yes, uh, we remember Rene Aubergenois, we remember Luke Perry. As I said, I'm not that familiar with uh, Cameron Boyce. Uh, I know a lot of other people are and were upset, but uh, I thought that I would give some recognition to these uh, these actors that passed, and because they weren't recognized by the Oscars, so let's let's recognize them here. Yeah, yeah, I'd heard about the Luke Perry thing, and uh, uh, I didn't realize that they uh, missed uh, Rene Aubergeois and, and and so many others. But um, yeah, I guess some people said. And uh, uh, Michael Mike uh, mentions, thank you for saving me here. He says, uh, Cameron Boyce was in Disney's Descendants and Grown Ups. He said, also, Sig Haig was left out. And that is mentioned in this article. Uh, this article, this is a good article. Uh, if you're concerned about this, there's Sid Haig right there. Uh, yeah. Horror scene to this, Sid Haig was an absolute legend, a wonderful actor, and a beautiful human being. For him to be blatantly ignored by the Academy for their uh, in memoriam section is absolute disgrace. He says also goes for Luke Perry and uh, Cameron uh, Boyce. So there's also Sid Haig. Uh, that's why it's nice to have people contribute to the show because when I forget stuff, yeah, people call us out on it. And look, we even have it there in the article. So yes, Sid Haig, obviously, we did talk about him when he passed. Uh, we did recognize him on this show. Uh, Sid Haig was a, a huge person in the like Comic Con scene. He was at so many events. I remember seeing him at San Diego Comic Con and other events like that. And I, I met him in my capacity as a staffer at the Phoenix Comic Con. I invited him to the Phoenix Comic Con, and he was very nice to me and gracious and all that kind of stuff. So uh, good catch we, there, uh, Mike. When we were at uh, San Diego Comic Con actually promoting Bushy Tales, uh, Lynn Workman, uh, who's former host of uh, 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 the uh, only audio version of this show, uh, and then uh, Micah, my wife, um, we were at San Diego and we actually ran into him actually at one of the shuttle buses at, you know, as the you know, convention was kind of winding down at the evening 
and uh, he was very cordial and nice and uh, spoke with Len and I and actually stopped to take a picture. So yeah, uh, he was, he was a pretty nice dude and, uh, and a legend, you know, one of the things that uh, heavily influenced things like red skirts, for example, uh, my web comic I do with Al Sparrow is things like Jason of star command. And he actually played the villain in Jason of star command for those people who remember that, uh, Saturday morning live action kids show. Uh, he's known as a horror icon, but I just remember him from things like Jason Star Command, Buck Rogers. I mean, he was just in all this fun uh, genre entertainment, just a, a genre entertainment legend in my mind because he was in so many different things. So just a, uh, just a tremendous uh, career because I, I can think of so many things I saw him in uh, just off the top of my head. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 